Hello, my name is Morgan Bailey, and I am an assistant curator for Living Collections in the Fish and Invertebrates Unit. Today, I will be talking about some of the ancient and freshwater fish that we have here at the museum. We're starting out here in one of our many backup areas where we keep animals that are not currently on exhibit. And while there are many interesting species that are kept in these tanks, we are here for this beautiful girl in particular, who looks quite similar to Placoderms of Era's past. This is a juvenile bofin, or Amia calva. Amia meaning fish, and calva meaning smooth or bald. She is one of the newest additions to our collection, and though still too young to be displayed, she is a prime example of a primitive fish. Bofins are what we would call taxonomic relics, because they are the last living member of the once highly populous order of the Meaforms. They're also sometimes called living fossils, because they have remained virtually unchanged for over 70 million years, dating all the way back to the Jurassic era. An important characteristic of these fish is the fact that they are physostomes. A physostome is a fish that has a connection between their esophagus and their swim bladder and can breathe air at the surface in addition to obtaining oxygen from the water. This gives them an edge in surviving in oxygen-deprived environments that would be dangerous for any other fish. Many bony fishes do not have this trait and are called physoclysts. Even in these species, however, this connection is present when they are in their embryonic state. This leads us to believe that all fish were once physostomes, and at some point in the evolutionary timeline, many species started to lose this connection as new niches became available to fill. Both fins are ambush hunters, lying still for hours on end, waiting for their food to come to them. Despite this, and even though this individual is very shy, you can occasionally see her dart up to the surface for a gulp of air before sinking back to the bottom. It may be another year or two before she's ready to display these behaviors to the public. So for now, let's head over to our flood safe exhibit, where we can meet some of her future tank mates. And here we are in front of the largest freshwater exhibit in the museum. Flood stage exhibit houses four different species of sunfish, one yellow perch, and four draconic looking long nose gars. The gars are fascinating because they are also an example of an ancient family of living fossils. Having remained mostly unchanged for over 100 million years, these are the oldest species of fish currently living in the museum. Much like the bowfin, they are also physostomes and frequently rise to the surface to breathe in air. They are decorated with a unique type of armor called ganoid scales. Unlike most other fish scales, ganoid scales have a thick coating of dentine. Humans also utilize dentine primarily on the outer enamel of our teeth. These large scales are diamond-shaped and nearly impenetrable, so once they reach a certain size, gars have almost no natural predators. This protection is so important that it is represented in their scientific name, which comes from the Latin words lepis, meaning scales, and osteos, meaning bony. Thus, lepis osteus osseus, or the bony, bony-scaled fish. These scales are a shared trait with the extinct Acanthodii fishes from the Devonian period. These are an incredibly important group in our early fossil records because they were transitional species, which show links between modern fishes and their ancestors. In this case, the ganoid scales present in this ancient species provides a link to where chondrichthians, such as sharks, started to split from teleosts, such as gars and other bony fish. Not only are they strangely adorable, but they're also an important species in research. In addition to the hints on fish's past, they are considered a bridge species between humans and the widely studied model organism known as zebrafish, which we also display here at the museum. The genes responsible for cleft palate and gars are very similar to those in humans. By taking the genetic information and applying it to the zebrafish, Scientists can better study how cleft palates form during embryonic development in humans. So as you can see, these living fossils aren't just creatures of the past. They're an important way for expanding our knowledge for the future.